Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the battle for control for the Senate in this year's Senate elections, and we're going to be taking a look at the fundraising numbers between Republican and Democratic candidates, and we're going to be filling out the Senate map based off of fundraising numbers alone. But before we get started in filling out these competitive swing races, make sure you guys are subscribed and click the bell so you're notified whenever I upload a video instead of missing out on any of them. And also, we have memberships, so if you're looking for that, it's pinned in the comment section down below. We have custom perks and custom emojis that you can use. Now back to the topic of today's video. I'm going to be filling out the 2024 Senate map with only the competitive states. We're not focusing on the solid blue or solid red states, only the swing states. And basically, take a look at some of these fundraising numbers we're going to be filling out the map based off of fundraising alone. On your screen right now is all the fundraising numbers with all of these candidates in some of these competitive uh, swing states. For example, Arizona, in which uh, a Democratic uh, Ruben Gallego is uh, beating Kerry Lake in terms of fundraising, basically overall. $7.5 million raised for him, and his opponent Kerry Lake has raised so far $4.1 million. So he's already outspending her, but it's not that significant. For example, for example, in Ohio, Sherrod Brown is destroying Bernie Moreno in terms of uh, fundraising and outspending him. Uh, he's raising $12 million, uh, and Bernie Moreno has no match compared to that. And then as for Florida, Rick Scott is actually barely trailing his opponent, but I don't think that's going to matter as that is comfortably going to go to him. Florida is just a lost cause for any Democrat at this point in time. And then in Michigan, very important, in which Republicans uh, are hoping that they can uh, pull off some sort of upset. And Alyssa Slotkin is currently out uh, spending her uh, opponent, Mike Rogers, at the current moment, 4.4 million raised for her, and Mike Rogers at 1 million. And then Montana, very important. Democrats are trying to hold on to this seat so that they can keep the Senate, in which it's probably going to flip. John Tester's outspending his opponent, Tim Sheehy. He's raised $8 million, and Tim Sheehy has raised $3 million so far. And then Nevada, Jackie Rosen is a favorite to win her race. She's raised $5 million so far compared to Samuel Brown's $2.2 million. I mean not the you know not the greatest outspending but still pretty significant. And Ohio extremely important. Uh, Republicans must flip this seat in order to take back the Senate. Uh, Sherrod Brown and Democrats are working hard to keep this seat. Like I mentioned earlier, he's raised 12 million significantly outspending Bernie Moreno in this race more than any other race. And as for Pennsylvania, uh, Bob Casey is a favorite. At this point in time, he's actually being outspent by his uh, Republican opponent, David McCormick. He's only raised $5.6 million compared to David McCormick's $6.2 million, who, by the way, lost in a primary uh, to Dr. Oz back in uh, the 2022 uh, Senate uh, primaries. And then as for Texas, uh, very important as well, Colin Allred is looking for some sort of upset to Ted Cruz, who is the favorite at this point in time. It's actually pretty close, but Ted Cruz is the slightly favored in terms of fundraising. And as for Wisconsin, this could actually be very surprising and Republicans could possibly upset Tammy Baldwin. Uh, she's always won uh, in her uh, Senate races. She's actually being outspent by her Republican opponent. Uh, she's only raised $5.4 million to Eric Hobday's uh, $9 million. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. Keep a, cl a close eye on in Wisconsin. And now let's go back to the map and fill out these competitive races based off the fundraising numbers alone. When that's the only thing we're going to be taking a look at in this video. So let's start off with Texas. Obviously, Ted Cruz is barely outspending his opponent, Colin Allred. And keep in mind, Ted Cruz actually almost lost to Better Rourke in 2018. But I can tell you right now that he has gained popularity ever since over the years. And I think he can actually expand on his margin considering that Colin Allred is slightly worse than someone like Better Rourke. You know, not as strong. So with that being said, I think Ted Cruz is going to be favored by a lean margin. This is a state that Democrats uh, kept hoping that they can uh, flip uh, in and they just failed to do so. They never had. In Pennsylvania, we go back to Pennsylvania. Bob Casey is actually being outspent, but I'm not sure if it's going to matter. I mean, it's not the greatest margin. It's only by roughly a little bit under a million dollars to David McCormick, who is actually pretty weak. So considering that David McCormick is not the strongest on the Republican ticket, I can tell you right now the Bob Casey's seat is not in jeopardy. It's going to be competitive, obviously, but no matter how close it gets, whether he's being outspent or he's not, it doesn't really matter. I think he's going to win that by a lean margin. Bob Casey's pretty much a strong Democratic incumbent in the Rust Belt. 
and then another strong Democratic incumbent is going to be uh, Tammy Baldwin from Wisconsin, in which she is actually being heavily outspent by her Republican opponent which could make things very interesting. She's only raised $5.4 million to Eric Hovde's $9 million. And he's pretty rich, don't get me wrong. He's been raising a lot, a lot of money to try to upset Tammy Baldwin, who's always won in her competitive races over the years. And I, I, don't get me wrong, I think she, this could be very close, but at the end of the day, I think she's going to win by a couple percentage points, probably 2%. With that being said, I think she's going to win by a lean margin at the end of the day. And now moving on to Nevada, in which Jackie Rosen, the incumbent Democrat, outspending her Republican opponent, Samuel Brown. She currently has raised $5 million to Tim Brown's $2.2 million, which obviously is not the greatest numbers, but it's still a little bit more than her opponent overall. And if this map was based off of fundraising numbers alone, then I can tell you right now, she's going to win the seat by a lean margin of roughly two percentage points, similar to Tammy Baldwin's margin in Wisconsin. I think they are similar candidates, and obviously in different states, but it's just a similar environment. And now moving to uh, the Rust Bowl state of Michigan, in which Alyssa Slotkin is actually outspending her opponent, Mike Rogers, in which, in my opinion, he's not the strongest Republican. And if Republicans try to play their cards correctly in Michigan, which I don't think they are, it's the GOP in Michigan is just an utter disaster. They, f they fail to run, I would say, electable candidates. And, say, you know, Alyssa Slotkin is weak. She's not the strongest Democratic candidate. And so with that being said, I think the state can get very close. But she's currently outspending her opponent. And with that being said, I think she's going to win by a tilt margin, but it's going to be close at the end of the day. I think she would win by roughly 1 to 2 percentage points, but don't get me wrong, it will probably be one of the closer states up in the Rust Belt. Michigan's Senate race will be closer than uh, Wisconsin's Senate race, definitely closer than Pennsylvania's Senate race. So Michigan, when it comes to the Senate, is going to be very important to watch, and there could possibly be an upset, but I think it's going to be very close, but I think Alyssa Slotkin is going to be the narrow winner at the end of the day. And then as for Montana's Senate race, uh, John Tester, strong Democratic incumbent. Keep in mind, this state usually votes to Donald Trump by about 20% on the general election side. So considering that they have a Democratic senator, goes to show you how strong he is because this state is so pro-Trump while they, you know, they voted in the Democratic center. But keep in mind, this is not a midterm, so it's going to be less favorable for uh, John Tester. This is a presidential election year, so it's going to be less ticket splitting. You won't really see see that nowadays so with that being said I think uh, uh, Donald Trump could carry over Tim Sheehy possibly despite his baggage that he's carrying today if this video was based off fundraising numbers alone John Tester is out uh, funding Tim Sheehy he's raised 8 million to Tim Sheehy's 3 million uh, not I mean not the greatest amount but it's still a decent amount at the end of the day so with that being said John Tester would win in this scenario by a tilt margin it's going to be very, very close. And now we have two more Senate seats to fill out before we close out this video. Republicans are already at 50, so if Donald Trump were to win re-election, the VP would obviously be the tiebreaker, just how it was for Kamala in the 2020 election. And then as for Arizona's Senate race, Ruben Gallego is currently out funding Carrie Lake, who is not the nominee as of right now. They haven't had the primaries yet, so we are waiting to see. And he's not significantly outfunding her. Keep in mind, she's raised $4.1 million compared to his seven point five. So it's $3 million more, which is still good, but not the best numbers. But in the day, Arizona is a left-trending state at the moment. And considering this is a, you know, president, she, she ran for governor back in 2022, and she, and she lost. And keep in mind, Arizona's Senate race is much harder to win if you're a Republican than the governor's race. So considering that, I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, Ruben Gallego is not an incumbent, so he still can very well lose. And polls are showing that it is a very tight race, but at the end of the day, in terms of fundraising numbers alone, I can tell you right now, Gallego is going to win his seat by a tilt margin. It's going to be very close no matter what the outcome is. And then as for Ohio's Senate race, we just mentioned this a couple times earlier, Sherrod Brown is destroying Bernie Moreno in terms of funding. He's out funding him, out raising him in terms of ads significantly in this state. And uh, I don't, that may or may not make the difference, but if the Senate was based off of uh, fundraising alone, I can tell you right now, Sherrod Brown would narrowly win uh, re election. Keep in mind, this state 
is projected to go to Donald Trump by roughly 10 percentage points in this year's election cycle. So there is a possibility Trump could carry him to a possible victory. And people have you know, said that J.D. Vance was a weak candidate. And considering that a quote-unquote weak candidate performed very well, he won by 6% to Tim Ryan, then if he's weaker than, I would say, Bernie Moreno, then Bernie Moreno would win hands down. But at the end of the day, this video is based off of fundraising numbers alone. So we go back to Florida. Uh, Rick Scott is being outspent. So that will tilt Democrat, which this scenario is not the likeliest scenario. And then and up in the rest of all, Bob Casey is being outspent by David McCormick, which is not the strongest Republican candidate. But this video is based off of fundraising numbers alone. He's nearly going to win that. And then in Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin is being outspent significantly. So with being said, it's going to be tilt R. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, back in the 2022 midterms, Ron Johnson underperformed the polls, so maybe Tammy Baldwin can overperform them, but we'll see. As of today, Republicans speak to the Senate with 51 seats, to Democrats 49 seats. Uh, based off of fundraising numbers alone, keep in mind this is not my actual prediction. This is just based off of who's actually getting outspent in some of these competitive uh, swing races. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video instead of missing out on any of them. And one last final reminder is we have memberships. So if you're interested in that, it's pinned in the comment section down below. We have custom perks and custom emojis that you can use whenever you comment on any of my videos. Now this is the Senate map based off of the funding. Thank you everyone for watching.